Hello Lilas, welcome back to my channel. Guys, if you are not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and share this video with all your dolly friends and friends and friends of friends. Anyway guys, um, so I am here with baby Noah. And for those that are new to my channel, Noah is the Willow prototype number two, sculpted, poured, rooted, painted by Claire Teller Dolls. And um, his edition is sold out. He's a what we call a kit edition. Um, there were three prototypes. And then after that, there were 15 blank kits sold of his edition. Now she has the Willow Awake, which is like my Nigel, if you look at my previous videos. And Nigel um, was, again, three prototypes. And then there is going to be 30 um, blank uh, kits sold of that edition. So just for everyone that may be new, turning it, tuning in. Um, so these dolls are sculpted, hand sculpted, and painted to look like lifelike dolls. We are very fully aware that they are not real, um, but as they are very realistic and feel very realistic, it is almost impossible not to handle them as real babies and um, dress them accordingly, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, guys. I wanted to talk to you guys today about um, something that a topic might be a little redundant, but I'm going to ease my way into it because I'm probably going to break this up in a couple videos. Um, just a couple things that came across my mind as it's been like a, you know, an ongoing topic for since as long as I've been in the community. But um, one is, you know, having such a hard time to get a baby from artists that you really love and admire people that you really want work um a lot of the real sought after artists um maybe a little harder to get you know their work into your collection um first of all let me say this this baby has been laying like this for days because i've been so sick i haven't been able to do it he actually this boppy was sitting on my bed and him and nigel was there for a longest and then i finally changed nigel and then he's been there because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to put him on so he doesn't even have on a diaper because I was taking certain photos and so I just kind of wrapped the cover around them so I have to get him on a diaper quickly here before I can even get him dressed but yeah um so yeah buying from certain artists that you know you may really love is might be a little challenging sometimes um when they're very sought after artists or if they're artists that don't you know paint or produce a whole lot like you know um mass produced dolls um and you know sometimes when artists put a lot into their dolls um it takes them a lot longer to produce than some of the the other artists um and some artists just you know they just have other things in their life that they they can't you know put out as many dolls as others and stuff like that which makes it more harder for us because it's so many of us compared to you know the artists the, the really sought after artists that we go after and um there's another thing that happens that i don't know if people talk about this or not um but over time, artists began to form what I call their customer list, their preferred list, stuff like that. And um, sometime before, like there's one particular artist, and I'll I'll, I'll tell you, um, Joanna, Joanna K is very known for this. She will come on, make a post, show a new doll, and then she'll say in within that post, please welcome, blah blah blah. The edition is sold out and you're like but you just welcomed it <laughs> you know it's like you just introduced it all and it's gone and so that's that that can be very frustrating um especially like for me for a long time i was like i wanted to experience one of her dolls so um 
yeah so i wanted to experience one of her dolls but every time she would come on for one of her dolls they would be sold out and so finally i could not contact her in one day and basically it was kind of like um yeah i'm working on so and so and so but you know pretty much like you needed to pay sight unseen and i'm a collector that's very especially if it's my first time and i've never had your work or you know i'm not in love with everything you put out i'm not a collector that do that i just don't do it even with my favorite artists sometimes i don't like everything that they put out so i'm very <laughs> reluctant to just go oh yeah here take five thousand dollars I hope it's something I like, you know, kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, so it was kind of like that, and I was like, mm, no. So, of course, by the time whatever came out, it was about sold out anyway. And then, or, you know, I buy something else, so you never really get it. So, that's what I call like a preferred customer list. They pretty much have the repeat customers that come and just buy the babies. Before they even get get it sold. I mean, before they even, you know, um, put it out there. And then, um, there's, you know, others that do customs that don't, that don't advertise they do customs, but only will do customs for certain people. And that is kind of frustrating as well. Um, and... So I've had that where I've contacted artists and they're like, I don't do customs. I don't do customs. And then, you know, I'm talking to so-and-so and they're like, oh, this was a custom. And it's from the same person that just told me they don't do customs. So I'm like, what the heck is this about? But what I realized, I actually have been on those lists of people that people do customs for, but don't do customs for other people. Now, what I'm about to explain to you is not an excuse or anything like that, but as you begin to paint and sell, you start to view things a little different and you start to see why this kind of start to happen. Um, you see him so cute. I've had this outfit for so long, like so many years. I can't even remember what baby I originally bought it for. I want to say... I want to say Kingston so maybe four years ago I don't know so anyway or five years ago Ooh, I don't know that's I don't know how long it's been but anyway it's a long it's a old outfit but I, I keep certain outfits but um so yeah so I so when you when you start painting and stuff like that and you go to selling and stuff like that you kind of start to understand one of the things when you do customs um, customs it can be very a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure, and sometimes, um, okay, I don't I don't want to put them on the bed. A lot of times, uh, you don't you don't want to work with someone that's gonna really pressure you and throw you off your game, which is gonna make you not do your best work. Um, so, but you've done work with someone that doesn't really bother you when you work. And you can do just the same amount of kind of work as you do as when you're working on your own. When those people come back and approach you about doing a custom, you're like, hey, sure. You don't turn down the money because it's an easy, it's an easy job. It's no lot different than what you like to paint. I mean, like how you paint regularly. So, you know, versus blindly saying, oh, yeah, I'll do customs for everybody and put yourself in a place where you get frustrated and feel like you want to quit and never paint again. Um, that's, that's how you, that's what happens. And then the other thing about the selling is selling is frustrating. It's scary. As you guys know, it's so much scamming and dishonesty and all these type of schemes going on right now in this community. And I'm sure it's probably just not just our community, but we're talking about our community right now. And when you've already had an easy transaction or honest transaction, I mean, of course, what you going to do? you rather deal with someone that you got to take a chance of having to deal with issues later or you rather deal with something that 
you know, that's going to be easy for you. So a lot of people say that's not fair. You know, everybody deserve a chance. Like, you know, well, it, it is not fair, honestly. It really isn't. But the thing is, it's kind of people livelihood and they got to do what's comfortable for them and what, you know, works for them. And that's kind of how I said, you know what, then I understood why, like, People like Joanna and Romy and other artists like that have their particular people that they sell to. Um, I know some Reborn artists as well that do the same thing that they'll do customs for. They'll sell straight out to and stuff like that. Um, but they don't do it with everybody because they don't want to have the hassle. They want a hassle-free sale. And so I get it. So it's very hard. So what do you do in those situations? A lot of times people wait and find those babies secondhand. Um, sometimes you just have to keep trying, you know, have the money, you know, straight up, you know, and, you know, let them know, hey, I can send you the money PayPal right now, you know, um, or if it's a custom, I'll give you half right now. I'm not a problematic customer. You know, here are some people that I've worked with. They'll let you know. I know we hate to be doing that. Like, I hated that when I first started. Don't ask me for no reference, you know, type thing. But, you know, in today's world, you might just have to. And then people may trust you a little bit more and may just go ahead and, you know, give you a shot. Um, that's my thought process on that. Um, so it's, it's a lot of struggles with this and that. And I know... Like, a lot of people be like, man, you know, why is it so hard to get a baby from this person, that person? And you, sometimes you start to, like, you know, I've talked to collectors where, man, they have said some ruthless things about certain artists because they can't get their work. And they feel like they sell to only certain people or so and so and so. And, you know, it's funny, but it's not funny because... I know what it's like to be, you know, on both ends. Be the one that they sell to and the ones that they don't sell to. So, um, the other thing is, you know, broad, broaden your horizon. Um, you know, there is so many talented artists out here today. Um, like I said, it's always, I have to be honest, it's always more challenging when you're looking for ethnic, uh, meaning biracial, um, African-American, um, you know, Asian, you know, uh, you know, something, like I said, ethnic babies, um, babies with, that's non-Caucasian. Um, there's a whole influx of amazing Caucasian babies. Like, if you want a Caucasian baby, like, the world is yours, so to speak, and you can find one, it's like a dime a dozen. I mean, that's like everywhere but it is much harder you do have to take your time and sometimes it's all about patience too you know stop jumping in and buying stuff just because and i just did that recently myself and i as experience of a collector or buyer as i am i literally did that myself here recently um however i'm kind of glad that i did on one particular one um on the one that I have up for sale I'm glad that I did uh do that with my Tory dolls because um her the sculpting on her is really nice and if she was a bigger baby um I probably it probably would be even much harder for me to sell her so um now I know in the future if I want a bigger baby when I look to go for one of her bigger babies and that I would actually enjoy it. So, um, that really wasn't too much of a loss, but now I got to try to sell her. But yeah, you know, you can not just rush and get something just because you want something new or you want a new baby or something like that. You know, you got to have patience. And if you can't get one doll or if you know it's like almost impossible to get the doll, you know, maybe then that's when you have to try second market. Um, if not... Um, look, maybe explore other artists, you know, that's where, you know, also doll shows come in handy, you know, checking out doll shows, seeing stuff in person. 
Um, cause a lot of times on camera, you know, you can't really see the fine details that you would see in person to different, uh, to tell the difference between, you know, uh, average doll from an exceptional doll or a mediocre doll from a below average doll because sometimes cameras actually can either make a baby look better or worse um and you know you just really can't really tell the true story sometimes but doll shows really put the stuff in perspective for you so anyway guys that's that i will um continue discussing a little bit more about buying and selling in the next video but for now, this is it. And um, that is Mr. Noah. And he is sleeping away. And I'm going to, of course, take his pictures. And then I will maybe uh, do another video if I get enough time. See you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.